Okay, so welcome to the second webinar um, that I'll be delivering. My name is Joe Dale, and um, I'm a bit of a fan of technology and language learning, so you can imagine that at the moment I'm uh, everyone's best friend because I'm trying to support language teachers, not just in the UK, but from around the world, on how they can um, uh, transform their face-to-face -face teaching into um, remote teaching. And so I've been working incredibly hard <laughs> In the last six weeks supporting language teachers and some of the ideas which I've been sharing I'll be sharing with you in the second webinar uh, it's lovely that some people have been able to come along from the first webinar and it's lovely also to have some new people in this session as well so um, as you can see these ideas are all around remote teaching and um, I really hope that you find them useful in this session we're going to be looking at ideas around creativity collaboration and some formative assessment ideas there's plenty to cover in the hour so um, I will go on to the, the next slide. I'll just give you a little bit of introduction about myself, if that's okay. So um, for those people that haven't seen me before, I was a, a French teacher for 13 years, head of department for the last three years, uh, teaching in, uh, well, three years at secondary school level, two years in North Wales, one year in Yeovil in Somerset. And then I moved to the Isle of Wight, where I, I live now and have been for many, many weeks, it seems, um, in lockdown. And I taught on the Isle of Wight in a middle school, nine, 13 year olds for 10 years. And for the last 10 years, I've been an independent languages consultant. And normally I go all over the world running training on the use of how technology can enhance language learning as well as across the curriculum. But my bread and butter is working with language teachers. And um, I've worked with all the major language associations in the UK. I've spoken at conferences and run training in places like Australia, North America, the Middle East, uh, South America, all over Europe. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, here, there and everywhere. Um, and at the moment, I'm delivering all my training via webinars. So if you're on Twitter and you're not following me, feel free to do so. I'm just at Joe Dale. I signed up in uh, 2007, which means i am just recently celebrated my Twitter anniversary and I have over 28,000 followers, which is a bit crazy. And I've had loads and loads of followers in the last few weeks as well, which is also lovely. And I'm really happy to help and support anyone that has any questions because I don't want to feel that anyone is know suffering in silence at the moment we've all got to play our role and step up i think at the moment and so uh my email address is uh joe at talk 21.com so if you want to contact me um after today or if you can't read your notes or, or what have you feel free to to uh, contact me and ask me any questions about the webinar or anything around uh, teaching and learning to do with technology if you're a languages teacher okay so that's what we're going to try and achieve in the next hour I'd also officially like to thank Pearson for giving me this opportunity. I'm very grateful and honoured to have this opportunity. And so um, I very much hope that you find the information I'm going to share with you useful. And don't forget, I'm recording the session so you can watch it back. Uh, but if you have any burning questions, feel free to put them in the chat and I'll try my best to answer them there and then. Um, but if not, I will um, answer them at the end. Or if you have any extra questions at the end, feel free to ask me as well. So this is what we're going to try and achieve in this session. We're going to be looking at... Uh, tools such as Seesaw, uh, Wheel of Names, Tab Resize, Socrative, Quizzes. And I'd also like to, us to have a look at whiteboard.fi, which we didn't have time to look at last time. And there's plenty to do. So I think we're just going to dive straight in if that's okay. So the first thing we're going to do is um, I thought we would quickly go through. Um, I know I showed you Jamboard last time but I've added a few more examples into Jamboard. So what I thought I would do is click on this link here and just go through uh, some of the ideas from the first one, because I don't think I went through every single idea and I think that um, this is particularly useful. So Jamboard, if you've not seen it before, it's a Google tool. You do need to have a Gmail account to access it. So it works in the G Suite environment as well as in a bring your own device uh, environment. And uh, it allows you to have up to 20 frames so it's perfect for collaboration and each frame you can give the link to sorry you can give the link to the Jamboard to a group for example if you're having breakout groups then you could do that very nicely you can give a different frame to a different group so this is a, a frame number one for example and then get them to do an activity and these are some of the things that you can do with Jamboard so the first idea is you can use a tool like Screencastify which works really nicely with Jamboard so Screencastify allows you to record the screen so that you're able to then, for example, draw over the top of your Jamboard and then record at the same time if you wanted to make an independent 
a screencast tutorial for your groups describing how to form a grammar point or maybe how to conjugate um, ER verbs or, or that sort of thing. And your annotation and your voice uh, and everything is recorded. So that's really nice. Or in a classroom situation, a remote classroom situation, whereby you're getting the students to all work together, you could also record that as well if you wanted to. And with Screencastify, you get access to a drawing tool, which means you can annotate over the top. And I'll, um, if there's time, I'll show you how to do that later on with whiteboard.fi. So that's the first one. Then you've got the crossword um, uh, possibility. So there's a website called Xwords, um, and you can go there, you can generate your crossword, uh, and then basically you just, just, you just draw over the top of the, where the boxes are, and then create uh, you're filling the crossword. So in other words, this is really nice as a starter activity. I think it's really important, having done a lot of research about this and talked to other language teachers, it's really important that if you are going to be doing live sessions as opposed to asynchronous learning, that you have some sort of like check-in or starter activity with the students, just ask them how they are and do a quick starter activity. And I think this sort of thing with Jamboard is really, really nice from that point of view. Uh, those people in the, in the chat have sort of said already they're Bitmoji fans. So this is quite fun. In fact, let me demonstrate this live for you. So if I click on here on the Bitmoji Chrome extension and I do a search in a moment once it comes up. So if I wanted to say, for example, well done, comma, Joe, like that. And there, there we are. These have all come up now that they've made it possible to customize text. And I could, for example, take this one and drag and drop it straight into my Jamboard like that. So that's really nice from the point of view of you could give uh, feedback to the students or they could use it as an activity around a Bitmoji that you like. Uh, and then if I click delete, I made this um, animation here by just using two Bitmojis and I use the website gifmaker.me, which worked really nicely. You could also use an app such as um, IMG Play, which is IMG P-L-A-Y. And you simply take the two images and then run them as, a, as an animated GIF, very straightforward. Next idea, uh, breakout rooms, which we will have a look at in this session. Um, in fact, let's do that right now, because I said this last time, we sort of ran out of time. So I'm going to stop showing my screen for a moment, and I'm going to launch breakout rooms like this, and I'm going to click on the automatic option. So we've got 50 people in the room, 54 people. So I'm going to go for 10 breakout rooms, there we are. And that means you can, we're going to have five to six participants in each room. Uh, when we do this, I'm going to pause the recording simply because uh, it will only record me looking at, looking at myself as it were in the webcam. So there's no point of having that. It won't record each individual webcam. Uh, so each individual's uh, breakout room. So what I'd like you to do um, once I click create rooms is um, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time. I'm going to click on options now and I'm going to give you, uh, I think literally just a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes to discuss in your groups how you're doing remote teaching and any sort of challenges you've had or anything that's worked particularly well. So I've done that now for you, and then I'm gonna click open all rooms and I will see you in about two or three minutes. Okay, so we're recording again. Everyone's gonna be coming back into the main room in a moment, which is lovely. So um, we've got a couple of questions in the chat. One from Emma, um, do you know if Teams has breakout rooms? So. Um, in that long document that I sent, uh, shared with you last time, I'll put it in the chat again for you, which is is.gd forward slash tilt as Joe Dale. Uh, if you go through that, there's a whole section on Microsoft Teams and there's some suggestions on how you can use that for uh, uh, creating similar, a similar idea with breakout rooms. You don't have it exactly the same, but essentially what's happening is you're making uh, private channels within Teams and then sending the students to those private channels so that they can then have a discussion for say five, 10 minutes and then bring them back into the main channel. So that's how that works. But if you go to the, um, that long document I've just shared with you, you'll be able to find the link. There's a couple of um, blog posts that I've put there, which will allow you to see how you can set it up in Teams. It's not as slick compared to Zoom, but it is possible. And then uh, for, the, uh, the recording that's going to be on my YouTube channel. I've just shared the, um, my username on YouTube there in the chat, Jodil100. Um, so there we are. So yeah, let's go back to my presentation, if that's okay. But hopefully you've all enjoyed the breakout rooms. I know that uh, in other Pearson webinars, um, 
we've used breakout rooms. So it's nice to be able to explore those in my webinar, which is great. So now you should be able to see uh, the Jam board again. So here you can see that there's some advice on breakout rooms. I'd encourage you to watch the video there by Russell Stannard, which goes through how to set them up. Uh, another idea for a photo card, you could uh, find an image using photosforclass.com, which is a really nice directory of royalty-free images. And when you download an image, it automatically adds the, um, the, the attribution of the image to the footer of the image, which is lovely. You can then put that into Jamboard and then ask the students to ask questions around that picture based on the photo card or Palm W, which you may have heard of, uh, for helping them to practice as a scaffold. A uh, snipping tool, which I'm using all the time, just uh, do a screen grab of uh, something, could be a worksheet, could be um, uh, something on the web that you want to put into Jamboard and get the students to collaborate. Next one, uh, if you're in a Google Classroom environment, you can create a Jamboard and share it automatically with uh, all your students, make a copy automatically for all your students, which is, could be very useful. Uh, this one is, is testing your mood, as I was saying at the beginning. Uh, I think it's really important to ask the students how they're feeling every single time that you meet up with them. So this could help. So you just got a, an arrow there where the higher up the uh, the icon that you put, the smiley face is showing if they're in a good mood compared to the sad icon, which is uh, representing that they would be feel in a bad mood. And therefore, uh, you'd ask the students to fill in their names and then decide on the arrow where they, they uh, position themselves based on how they're feeling on that particular day. And then that can then lead to discussions or what have you. Um, we did this one last time. This is when I asked you to uh, go to the Google image search, find an image which represented how you felt, and then put it into Jamboard. So that's a really nice one, again, for testing uh, people's mood. Uh, simple one using a website such as flaticon.com, which allows you to have access to thousands and thousands of uh, images, uh, clip art, and then you can then download them. You do need to give attribution unless you pay but for free you give attribution. That's why I've added the little uh, sticky note there. And then you could get the, uh, another student in the group to then label that picture. And that's a really simple example, but you could obviously write a lot more language if you wanted to. This one is a sorting activity whereby you're sorting subject pronouns with auxiliary verbs and part of participles. So you'd actually write those in the language that you're teaching and then get the students to uh, sort them in the right order. Next one, simple sort of picture type activity. You draw the picture, you get another student to label it. Uh, this one would be a uh, an activity whereby you're sorting uh, answers on the left-hand side and answers on the right-hand side. It could be around a topic such as healthy eating. So if you wanted, for example, to put all the healthy options on the left-hand side and the unhealthy options on the right-hand side and then get, have a debate about that, this is obviously in a, in a live synchronous uh, situation. Uh, but you could use Jamboard uh, asynchronously as well. The idea here is you've taken a screenshot, possibly using the snipping tool of a text that you want the students to work on. You add some questions here, or you ask them to create some questions, and then you ask them to answer it on the other side. So again, helpful to have color coding for the questions and the answers to make it clear which one is which. Here you've got a dialogue. You could mix all the dialogue up beforehand to get them put, put it back in the right order, or get, or get them to create the dialogue based on your model. Simple one as well. Uh, this is very nice. You can save an individual frame as an image and then uh, use it as evidence later. You can download the whole Jamboard as a PDF. You can make a copy. I would always recommend making a copy before you share a Jamboard with a, with a group because if they want to click on clear frame, which will then obviously delete everything on that frame, you can click undo, but it's a, it's a pain to, to do that. Or if they start rubbing things out, then if you've always got a, a blank copy um, or, or a new copy, I mean, should I say, before you share it, then you always know that you've got your, your work is not being uh, removed or deleted. Here's a screenshot of a Google map. You could use this for direction. So just drawing on the screen uh, by annotation, that's fine. Uh, straightforward, again, as a speaking activity. Uh, simple matching activity, so simple colors with the text, but you could have any, any images here uh, as a matching thing, as a starter activity. The Scramble Later uh, is a tool which I've only heard about recently, which allows you to put in um, a sentence or sentences, and each one will put, then have the word order changed and then you can then use that as the basis of then creating a similar activity with um, sticky notes that you then have to drag and drop into the right order. Likewise with the reverse text generator it does similar things with uh, manipulating of text. Uh, and then I encourage people to then go to this link um, to then check out another set of activities and it so happens I've got them for you right now. 
So if I click here, here's some more ideas, um, which some of which include Bitmoji, you'll be pleased to hear. So um, the idea of this was that I would encourage people in the MFL Twitterati to share their ideas as well. So a teacher has shared this one as a starter activity question of the day. You can see you have the question in Spanish there, and then you ask the pupils to then put their answers using sticky notes. Uh, this one is using a website called remove.bg, which I'll put in the web in the um, chat right now, which I find very useful. Uh, so you can put in a picture of yourself, a photograph, and it removes the background automatically. It's also really nice for Bitmojis because if there's some text on the Bitmoji that you don't want to have, you can use uh, uh, remove.bg. And then if there's still bits you don't want to have, there's an eraser tool which allows you to then rub out sections. And then the speech bubble here I used in the iPad version because you get access to a few more features. And that allowed me to create this um, speech bubble. And then I used the, uh, the drawing feature for the text and it, it recognizes the handwriting and turns it into text, which is very nice. Uh, but you could use another tool like Google Slides or PowerPoint to add a speech bubble to your image. So that could be quite nice as an introductory picture of, your, or you, of yourself or a celebrity maybe introducing the lesson. Another idea that would work really nicely in uh, breakout rooms, you could have two frames, one uh, with the student, uh, one with one frame with one student, another frame with another student, and then play battleships. So when I was teaching in the classroom, I used to do this all the time on paper. So I just uh, found the, the battleships icons by uh, using what's called auto draw within um, Jamboard, or you could use flat icon. You find the images, uh, the image, and you copy and paste them as many times as you need to, and then you practice the structure uh, Aimé plus uh, pastimes uh, with um, uh, aller, regarder, faire, jouer, jouer, and what have you. But you could use that for lots of different verb conjugations, and I find that battleships is really nice. And obviously you just have to say to the, the students, they're not allowed to look at each other's frames, otherwise it makes the game pointless, but they might enjoy that, I think. Uh, another idea which I came up recently, so a classic traditional game, but why not revamp it in the 21st century, Connect Four. So the idea is you've got this grid here, which I just generated in uh, Google Slides, I think it was, or um, no, I think I made this one in Google Drawing, actually. And then the idea is then you would use the pen tool to then either do a red cross or a yellow cross uh, on the screen to then show uh, that you've got a line of four. Uh, and then you'd have questions uh, that you'd share with the students, which they could ask each other around a certain topic in order to be able to do a cross either in red or yellow. Uh, this one I did on Sunday morning, I think it was. Um, I asked the MFL Twitterati to add their Bitmojis onto a Google Slides presentation, which has over 100 Bitmojis now, which is really cool. And so I would, I'm, I'm thinking about how I can use these different Bitmojis in different um, creative ways. So this one I thought it'd be really cool to do a guess who with the MFL Twitterati. So um, I've deliberately put in um, a mixture of male and female um, uh, faces, um, some of which have long hair, short hair, different eye color and what have you. So the suggestion is here that you could use this as a nice way of doing guess who, uh, practicing speaking and in this case, physical description. So uh, if you do use it, please do let me know on Twitter because I'd, I'd love to see um, to get some feedback about it. But I thought that's a really cool idea. Uh, noughts and crosses. So I've just used the Google image search to add the different pictures. And then you just do a cross or a, or a zero as per normal. Uh, ER verbs, you could just drag and drop the, uh, the stem in the right place, the ending and the subject pronoun. It could be quite fun. This is just to show you how you can make a what's called a force copy of a Jamboard. So in other words, if you go through these different steps, uh, it allows you to share a link with someone who then clicks on it and it automatically allows them to make a copy as opposed to um, deleting, let's say something that you don't want to delete. So that's a nice way around that. So it goes through how to do that. If you're not sure, if it's, if it's not clear on that slide, just Google force copy for a Google uh, slideshow or doc or Jamboard and it will go through the same uh, ideas. Uh, simple picture. This was shared by someone in the MFL Twitterati. Describe a picture, a variety of grammar and vocab practice. So again, a simple idea. Uh, this one, this is my idea again. So you just have an image and then you can just label it with a uh, student can label it. These are just made up names. I just made them up. And then they would then have to come onto the mic and describe what their picture is representing as a uh, discussion starter. Uh, PNG flows quite nice, particularly those people that are getting into creating their own Bitmoji classroom for a Google Classroom banner. Then uh, PNG Flow is a website which allows you to find uh, royalty-free PNG images which don't have a background. 
So that's ideal if you're building up a background picture um, as a Bitmoji classroom for those people that are getting into that. Another simple idea, get the students to work out through directions how to get out of the maze. Next one. Uh, again, this could be like a, in a way of doing a register at the start of the lesson. So you're using the tick and the cross icons um, to show if you're here or not. And then again, your mood, happy face or sad face. Uh, teaching uh, the weather by using um, these sort of auto draw icons on, on a background of France or whichever one you want to choose. Uh, students describe the weather. So you can see I've been thinking a lot about this. This is another uh, idea shared by someone in the MFL Twitterati. So this is obviously GCSE. Uh, practice so you've got the question here ask and answer the questions you've got the different questions here and then the idea here is that the students um, are putting in suggestions on what you could include what they could include so in other words you're collaboratively scaffolding uh, the language and in the original screenshot which uh, the teacher sent me which wasn't as clear which is why I've recreated it it had uh, example sessions in Spanish as well but I thought I would just keep it nice and uh, tidy like this because it was a bit messy the other one um, but you get the idea so that's students working with each other supporting each other again a, a, a um, frame shared by a teacher so you can see you know listen to a description and draw example there is a ginger cat in the middle of the frame uh, another one again, again a bit random introduce new vocab add new words and sticky notes students to insert images uh, an example a rolling pin so a teacher uh, shared that with me and I think that's it for the time being so yeah so there's a few more frames there if you want to share your ideas feel free to do so. But that's um, a few more ideas, practical ideas on how you can use Jamboard. Um, I thought I'd share this with you as well. We looked at Flipgrid last time, but here's some examples from different teachers who are using Flipgrid. So this is Jane Bassnet, who's uh, been making quite a few Flipgrid shorts, which are just sort of standalone Flipgrid videos. So she is talking here about how to form the simple future. So she's got the image on her screen and then she's using the pen tool to annotate over the top and recording the whole thing as a video. On the right hand side, she's explaining um, how to form the perfect tense using either avoir or être, and again, uh, annotating over the top of her, her image there. On the left hand side, you've got a really nice uh, video called How to Teach Remotely with Flipgrid. Uh, this teacher, is um, his, uh, his username is EdTech Classroom, or New EdTech Classroom. You've got all the links there anyway to check it out. And he's done lots of really interesting videos around remote teaching, so I'd encourage you to have a look at that. And then this is Jess from Flipgrid who's talking about different ways in which uh, you can use Flipgrid. And I particularly like this stop motion idea, which she explains in the video on how to do that, which is something I've never seen before on Flipgrid. So again, lots of uh, different things that you can have a look at, uh, but real practical ideas from teachers. Uh, likewise with Padlet, which we looked at last time. Uh, here we've got a, um, a Padlet wall that uh, Kerry Anwen James, who's Kerry Anwen on Twitter, who's an assistant head teacher in uh, Cardiff, uh, working in a Welsh uh, first medium school and she uh, created a couple of years ago a, a GCSE revision wall with lots and lots of links for um, the students to practice their German and then Esmeralda Salgado um, uh, copied the idea with her with um, with her, with um, Kerry's agreement so she created another Padlet wall with lots of ideas around GCSE revision and then uh, here's a, um, a screenshot from a teacher uh, Giselle Fitzpaldi, who was using the um, recording audio idea, which I shared last time for speaking practice. Um, so there we are. So that's a, a bit more evidence of how real teachers are using these ideas in the classroom. One of my top tips, which I've said many times before in other presentations, for finding um, uh, examples of real teacher use of these different um, ideas is to do a search for hashtag MFL Twitterati plus a keyword, which could be the name of a tool such as Flipgrid or Padlet or what have you, or an idea such as speaking or grammar or writing or whatever it might be. And if you click on the photos option in Twitter, when you do that uh, and you spend say 10 minutes while you're having a cup of coffee, then you will find a, a, at least one gem every single time you do that, I would suggest. So you'll find you know, real teachers using these ideas, using these tools, and not only can you get inspired by the idea, you'll have the person's Twitter handle next to the tweet that inspires you. So you can then contact them and ask them for more details about exactly what they were doing. And, and in my experience, people are very, very happy to share ideas, particularly at the moment for obvious reasons. Okay. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at Seesaw. So this is brand new content. 
And again, I'm going to start off with an example. So you can see here, we've got Le Matin de Monsieur Lyon, and I'm just going to click on the uh, Twitter link here. And I'm just going to play you a little bit of video, which is here, if I click here, and then play the video, and then I'll show you how you can use this. Here we go. In Spain, in the lab, live, Il mange le petit déjeuner. Il se lève. Il attend le bus. Il se brosse les dents. Il se habille. Il se réveille. And there we are. So lovely little activity. Uh, th this is um, obviously a primary example, but you could use this um, uh, later up the school for sure. And what the teacher is doing here is um, they put a screenshot of a, um, an exercise and by using Seesaw, uh, the child is able to add labels and then drag and drop them while giving a voiceover, practicing in the target language and everything can be recorded and captured at the same time, which is really, really nice, I think. So um, this is, a teacher, Jean-Pierre Ussaf, who works at the American School of Paris, and uh, that was his example. And then on the right-hand side here, um, I asked the question uh, a couple of weeks ago on how are people using uh, tools to help their students asynchronously. And this teacher, Jennifer Lilly, who is Ouija teacher on, uh, on Twitter, Ouija stands for someone from Glasgow, uh, from Glasgow, if you didn't know. And she um, had a great big discussion. I've just got a little bit of it here, talking about using Seesaw as a way of creating a, uh, an asynchronous um, check-in, if you like, with, the, with her children. So in other words, she'll post something onto the, um, the class feed and then get feedback from her students, which could be audio or video or, um, or text. And it's just a nice way of uh, checking in with them and then giving them activities that they can then complete with parental uh, supervision, of course. Okay, so let's carry on to the next slide, which is here. So this is Seesaw itself. You can access it via the, uh, the QR code or just go to app.seesaw.me. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come out of my presentation like this, and I'm gonna show you how the um, Chrome extension works. So I'm going to go to uh, here and click on this link. There we are. So you should all be seeing the Pearson website that you went to to register. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Seesaw extension, which is, uh, which is post the Seesaw here. So I click on that, like that. And then what I can do is I can click uh, Capture Visible Area or Capture Selected Area. So I'm going to click on Capture Selected Area. And then what I can do is I can now drag and drop over this particular title like this and then just let go. And what that will do is, because I'm already logged into Seesaw, it will take that picture and put it straight into uh, Seesaw, into a post. So if you've, not seen, if you've not seen Seesaw before, it's a little bit like Facebook in the sense that you have a feed, a class feed, and uh, you can post multimedia content into Seesaw and it's all privately stored and it's GDPR compliant. And it's really, really nice from that point of view. So I've made that little screenshot, which could be anything on the web. And now I can click on the microphone icon like this. And I can now record my voice like this. Here we go. So, okay. So I'm recording my voice right now. And if I want to, I can use the uh, pen tool like this. And I can now start underlining something like this, or I can circle something, or I can write an arrow and everything's being recorded. I can choose a range of colors, but I'm just gonna stick with blue right now. And that's essentially it. So you can have your voiceover and your annotation and everything and the picture all collated all together in the, in the same place. So I'm gonna click uh, pause now. I could then uh, clear the screen if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna click done. Okay, and I can then play it back, but I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna click the tick here. I then select um, the people in my class or the person in the class who I want to assign this to. Obviously, in this demo, I've only got myself, 
but um, I've done that now. But in a real situation, you'd add all your class to this, to Seesaw. There we are, and there it is. So I can now click play. Okay, so I'm recording my voice right now. And if I want to, I can use the uh, pen tool. There we are. So I can see um, Aruna has asked the question, can you add music to? You can certainly upload music, but it would have to be copyright free music for obvious reasons. So in a moment, I'll show you how you can, how you can add content. But if you had it in, say, Google Drive, you could upload music and it would then automatically appear, appear with its own player, which is nice. Um, if I were to, let's imagine that a student had done this and I click on the three dots here and I click edit item. You'll see now that I've gone back to this page here. And now if I go to um, re-record like this, um, what I could do is I could launch my Bitmoji again. So this is when a student has created some work and I want to say, well done, Joe, again, let's choose a different one. Let's go for this one. So I can drag and drop it. And uh, No, sorry, not drag and drop it, that's wrong. Let's do that again. So, well done. Joe like that and then let's find the so let's say I want to go for this one I right click it and click copy image and then I do control V and there we are so in other words I could give some feedback within seesaw uh, of from student work by doing that having done that so I can then tick click the tick again and it will then upload it can you see and it's just added it into the students work if I now click on comment, another way of giving feedback is to give a written comment, such as well done, Joe, like that, and click post. But there's also, if I click comment, there's also a microphone, and I can leave an audio comment as well, which I think is particularly good for languages like this. Okay, so I've been having a look at your um, screencast, Joe, and I think it's wonderful, well done, but I did notice that you need to work on A, B, and definitely C, keep up the good work. Okay, so I've done that now. I can listen back to it. Okay, so I've been having a look at your um, screen. Okay, and then I click the tick. And there it is. You can see that's now appeared here. So in other words, you can get the students to upload their work. You can give written feedback, audio feedback, and you can use a Bitmoji feedback as well, which you can customize with your own words. You only want to have, say, three words there or so. Otherwise, it will get too long. But uh, you can see it's really nice where you can customize it with a student's name if you wanted to. Now, if you click on the plus icon here and click post student work, then you can see the sorts of things that you can do. So you can, for example, take a photo, you can draw a picture, a little bit like what I showed you a moment ago. In fact, let me just do that right now. Let me just show you. If I click record right now, start recording. So now I'm recording on the screen. So I could, for example, do this, then press pause, uh, and then uh, click on the eraser like this click erase drawing it gets rid of it i then uh, go back to the pen tool again start recording again and then write goodbye and i can obviously change the colors and all that sort of stuff as well so you get the idea so then i press done and then press the tick again assign it to the student up it goes and there it is and i can then watch that back etc so those are the main things I wanted to show you around Seesaw. There's lots of other things you can um, set up, the, how you can set up the class. You can choose uh, for the students to only see their own work as opposed to everyone else's work, which is probably what you want in a remote teaching environment. In fact, Seesaw have made these get home learning codes available now, which means that you can only see your own work, not to everyone else's. You can also publish some work to a, a, a public blog if you want to, um, a bit like the example I showed you earlier. But if you don't do that, by default, everything is private and you can choose whether you enable student comments, everything is moderated. You can also click on the three dots here and click save like this. And that allows you to download the video. If you're on a, a, an app uh, for this Seesaw app, you can download it as an MP4 file. If you're on a, um, a web browser, it down, downloads it as a WEBM file. But if you open up in VLC, which is a free uh, media player, you can convert it into something like MP4 if you want to. So there we are. So those are a few things. There's a lot more about Seesaw. There's like Seesaw activities as well, which you can check out. But what I would suggest is if you're interested, have a look on the Seesaw Facebook group. 
There are Seesaw ambassadors on Twitter as well that you can connect with, and it's really fabulous. And it's mostly, I would say it's used a lot by primary schools, but you could use it with secondary as well. And I love particularly like the, the feedback options that you have with it. So that's Seesaw. Let's go back to my presentation. Yep, that's all good. So we'll just move out of the way and then click present. Okay, and then let's go on to the next idea. Okay, right. Wheel of Names. Now, I don't know if you've seen Wheel of Names before. I'll just put this in the chat, but I think this is a really cool tool, and I'm going to explain why. So Wheel of Names, the classic Wheel of Names is a name picker. So if you click on this right now, you can see that you can decide who is your favorite beetle like this. So we click on this. Let's see who it's going to be. So according to Wheel of Names, they think that John is their favorite beetle. So in a classroom situation, I could say, right, John, can you now answer my question? So it's a really nice name picker. But if we explore other options, you can also use it as a way of asking questions in the target language like this. Ah, that's the wrong one. Okay, let's go back. No problem. So as you can see here, uh, we've got different questions in Spanish, which you can then um, uh, get the students to then answer. And then each one will come up randomly. If I click on this one, it should be the right one. There we are. So this is um, uh, one for, uh, as you can see, pets. If I click on here, one of them will come up. And then I can ask someone in the, in the class to then talk about their pet mouse, for example. Okay. And you could use any images that you want. If you wanted to use um, this auto draw, as it's called, uh, it's very straightforward. You just go here, autodraw.com, like this. Uh, let's click on uh, start over, like that. So if I, for example, were to draw something with my mouse, which is not the easiest thing to do, you can see at the top of the screen, it thinks this doodle is either... Uh, traffic lights or it might be a skull or it might be a shell or it might be a balloon but of course it's actually a light bulb and then if you click on the fill tool like this you can then change the color like that and then you can then click here and it becomes yellow and all the rest of it and you could even do the background as well if you wanted to you could change the background oh that's a bit too much actually let's go back to white like that okay then you click on the three lines here and you click download you then download it onto your PC, and then you then can upload it onto Wheel of Names very, very easily. So you just go to wheelofnames.com and then add the image. Okay, let's go back to here. This is another similar idea. This is if you wanted to have a range of activities and the students get to choose one randomly, then you can do this as well. And it's Flipgrid, which we did last time, so that's all good. Right. And you can always click remove if you want to then uh, move on to another activity. Now, that's all well and good, but what I'm going to show you now is something which is, takes it to the next level, okay? Which is this. So Vincent Everett, uh, who uh, is a head of department in Norfolk, he is also a member of the Association for Language Learning. And when I sort of first started talking about Wheel of Names on Twitter, he got excited about the idea of using Wheel of Names as a way of um, harnessing sentence builders. So what he, if you don't know about sentence builders, you've got different columns with different bits of language and then you take one idea from each column to then make a sentence, okay? So if you want to watch the video of him describing this, it's at 20 minutes, 48 seconds. So I took what he was inspired about and put it into this presentation. So you can see here, this is an example of a sentence builder whereby you've got um, different columns with different bits of language. And then I put each... Uh, column into a separate wheel of names, which I'm going to demonstrate right now. Okay, so this is uh, what I did. I used the um, Chrome extension called Tab Resize. There's other Chrome extensions which allow you to do the same thing. Let me just put them in the chat for you. So you've got Tab Resize, you've got Tab Scissors, and you've also got uh, Dualless, and they all do the same thing basically. They allow they allow you to create uh, a different um, tabs all together in the same uh, window. And so to do that, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to demonstrate this live. Uh, well, actually, I've done a little video clip as well, which um, you'll get in this presentation. But I'm going to demonstrate this live right now. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to go to uh, tab resize, which is this one. 
Okay, and I'm going to, if I click on the plus icon here, I can choose the number of rows, which is gonna be uh, one, and the number of columns, which is gonna be four, and then I click save. Okay, and you see it's here. So I click on that, and what happens is, uh, it all goes like this. Now, can you let me know, can you see all four tabs or just one tab? If you could let me know now, that'd be really handy. One, right, so what you do then is I stop showing my screen, and then I share my screen again, but this time I click on the screen option and I'm hoping now you can see all four tabs. Is that right? Yes, right. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm now going to go to Wheel of Names in all of them. So just bear with me. So it takes a little bit of time to set up, but once you've done it, it's there. Now you can save each, each wheel independently. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on the three lines there and click open. And then I'm going to click on uh, wheel one. You can see I've named them all here. So I click open for wheel one. Then I go to the next one and click open. And I go to wheel two, like that. Then I go to the next one, click there, open and wheel three, which is here. And finally, click on the hamburger as it's called, click open, and then click wheel four, which is there. Right, so now you should be able to see uh, the four wheels. So the idea is I now click on all of them like this, and it's gonna make up a random sentence based on the sentence builder. So you can see what's gonna happen is we're gonna have this. Okay. So as you can see, we've got the random sentence, J'adore monter à cheval à Derham, which is where um, Vincent lives, parce que, and then, so that's the, the first uh, bit of the sentence. And then from the parce que, you can then click close again, and then run them all again to make a longer sentence. So by doing this, you're basically making a very, very long sentence. So you can use this as a random way of generating uh, sentences as a way of promoting speaking and writing. So the, the link, um, I've put that, it's in the presentation. I'm going to share the whole presentation with you later, so don't worry. Or you can have a look on my YouTube channel right now and come out of this webinar, but I'm sure you don't want to do that. So um, that's it. And then to put all the, um, all the tabs together again, what I would recommend is clicking on the three dots here and choosing the Chrome extension called Tab Glue, which then puts them all back into one wheel. And there we are. So if you wanted to add an image here, you click Add Image, you then select your picture, which is here. And as you can see now, we've got a light bulb amongst our wheel. And then if you click um, save like that, you name the wheel. You have to have a Google account to do this. You na name the wheel and you're good to go. And then if you want to click share, you can do that as well. You click continue and continue. And then you just copy the link and share that with your students. So that's how you do it basically. That's how it works. Um, but watch the video because I go over it in more detail in the video and um, that's Wheel of Names. So I think that's really cool for promoting random speaking and writing using uh, sentence builders, okay? So hopefully that was nice and clear for everyone. So let's go back to the next bit, okay? Right, Socrative. Okay, so with Socrative, um, if you haven't seen it before, it's a formative assessment tool. Um, you could use it as a way of trying to stop students using Google Translate but if they really want to use it, then I'm sure they will do. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a live session with you in a moment, showing you how that works. But here's some examples of how teachers are using Socrative. So you've got, for example, Harrogate Grammar School, saying that they're using it to check understanding grammar, uh, show patterns with common problems, and they use it for exit tickets as well. So it's good for individual feedback. Uh, in yellow here, that's from a Guardian article from about five years ago, written by William Strange, also from Harrogate Grammar School. So as you can see, uh, he's written, after a short amount of teaching on a particular grammar point, students might then complete an interactive quiz using Socrative. This is a really useful assessment for learning tool strategy as the results are collated and fed back to the teacher automatically by email. And then the idea of this screenshot was um, uh, that um, the MFL Twitter RT wanted to sort of share codes with each other, which you can do. But unfortunately, I think that's all the codes they shared. It was about 11. So it didn't really uh, take off, but you get the idea. Um, and then you've got the space race here, which is a nice sort of, um, plenary activity. If, you, if you're sick of Quizlet Live, then try the space race in Socrative. So I'm going to come out of um, the presentation in a minute and I'm going to show you this live. 
So I'd like you to go to Socrative.com and log in as a student. So I'm going to uh, come out of here, click exit. I'm going to log into Socrative, which I should have open. Yep, I've got it open here. So can you go to uh, Socrative.com and log in as a student, uh, for which you will need a room number, which as you can see on the screen is 29701. 29701. Okay. So if you could do that for me now, go to Socrative.com, which is Socrative.com, sign in as a student by using the room uh, number. And then what I will do is I will go to where it says launch and click quiz and click Pearson example quiz. Okay, which is a very simple example. I also choose teacher paste uh, because it allows you to then choose how long you show the uh, question to the students or the text to the students. Um, I'm not going to have require names and click start. Okay, so once um, everyone starts joining, I've got 14 people so far in the in the session. I'll just give you another couple of seconds, if that's okay. Um, and I'm suggesting that you could use this for formative assessment or even summative assessment if you had the webcam pointed at their hands to make sure they're not using a device to use Google Translate. Right, are we all good to go? I've got 23 people here. So yeah, so just as you can see, for the first question, what I've done is I've used the image option, which you can for each question. So I've, I've taken a screenshot of um, some text, which I just wrote in uh, Google Drawing, but it could be any text that you're using with the students at GCSE or QSA3. You put it into uh, the first question and then you ask them a simple question, or you ask them a question. But I can choose how long they see that question for, if that makes sense. So I can now click next, which means we then go on to question two. So in other words, if you give them a timed amount of time to do this, it should hopefully stop them from using Google Translate. So here I've used auto draw, and it's a very simple true or false question, which I'm sure you can all answer very, very easily. Um, so that works in that way. And then we'll move on to the next question. That's lovely. So then I click next. Uh, but that, could, that image could have been the same text again. So you could use this for reading comprehension, just use the same text for each question, but you choose how long the students see the question for. Again, uh, there we are. So it's interesting that some people have written pizza, some people have written la pizza. The actual answer is un pizza, um, either with a capital U or a capital P. So you can give alternative responses if you want to. Okay. And that's it. And then I click finish and click OK. Right. So as you can see now, we've got all the uh, answers here. I could show the answers, which obviously I wouldn't do. I would be so cruel. But what I can do is click download here under whole school Excel, having clicked on reports, and then that will download an Excel spreadsheet, which I wouldn't show to the students. I would just um, have it for my own information. I can then open this up right now, and then I can then see exactly who needs to work on their part, uh, on their part, on their articles even, can't even say it, uh, and you've got all the information there. Okay, so that's how that works. And then you can save that automatically to Google Drive or to Microsoft Teams or whatever it is that you want to, to use. So that's Socrative.com. If you want to see how to make your own quiz, um, go onto YouTube and just do a search for tutorial, Socrative tutorial, and you'll find it very easily. But that's, I think, a nice way of doing um, a reading comprehension practice within a remote, lead, a remote teaching context. Okay, we've got a couple more minutes, which is great. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Right, I created this as well for you, which is um, uh, okay, uh, uh, which is a Google form. Um, and if I just click on the top link, the idea of this Google form is it goes through um, lots of different question types that you could use in languages, uh, again, for asynchronous formative assessment. So we start off with what is your surname? What's your first name? The reason I have that as the first question is because in the Excel spreadsheet or the Google sheet it generates, you can then put in alphabetical order. So as you can see, we've got different question types. Uh, you've got this one, multiple choice. You've got uh, multiple choice with pictures. You've got, again, that same image again for the text. Uh, multiple choice here, whereby you've got the four answers there, and so on and so forth. So if I just carry on and show you, this one's quite nice. So I've got audio for each uh, question, uh, sorry, each answer. You listen to each answer, and then you select the correct one. This one is multiple choice grid, whereby you're matching um, the English with the French. You've got um, putting the words in the correct order, like this. 
putting the dialogue into the correct order by using the multiple choice grid again. Uh, you've got a drop down option. If you have more, lots and lots of different multiple choice answers, you can use the drop down. Check boxes, you um, uh, click on the uh, correct answer where you've got more than one correct answer. Likewise, you've got some audio there, which I recorded using online voice recorder, which is a free tool which allows you to record audio online. And then you put it into Google Drive and you make sure that the, uh, the audio is in a folder which has a shareable link, as it's called. And again, you've got multiple answers which are correct there. So you put that in and you, you know, so, so on and so forth. Um, this one I put today, which is you could use Vokaroo as a way of recording speaking and then post the link, which it generates automatically into here. So that's not marking it for you, but it's a nice way of assessing speaking, which you would then listen to and then give them a mark as a result. And then the final one is just a, a student voice one when you're getting them to write down what they think and uh, think about a certain question. Okay. So that's that. And if I go back to my presentation, then if you click on the bottom link here, like this, and you click make a copy, so this is the forced copy idea that I was talking about before, you automatically get a brand new copy of this, and then you can then do whatever you want with it, uh, adapt it, oh, adapt it, or, um, sorry, I've gone back to the adapt it, or you can uh, use it as, yeah, as you see fit. Right, we're gonna have a quick look at quizzes, if that's okay. So I'm gonna come out of here, and I'm just going to do this live with you because uh, quizzes is awesome for uh, listening comprehension. It's a bit, it's a bit like Kahoot, but it gives you more options, I think. So there's lots of things you can do. I'm just going to do this one live with you. Click continue. Okay. So uh, can you go to joinmyquiz.com for me, please? Join my quiz dot com and put in the code 054599 and I'll just start the activity what I've done is I've recorded audio for each question there are seven questions and you'll be able to access that in a moment and then you'll be able to listen to the audio and then answer the question accordingly so once you do that I'm just going to literally going to give you a, a second or so to do this and then we'll start okay well done, everyone. Very quick. Excellent. Okay. I think we just start if that's okay. So I click start now. You mute the audio, otherwise it'll be overbearing music like this. Right. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to click on the audio, have a quick listen, and then answer the question accordingly. So you get the idea. So to record your questions, you can record up to 10 seconds per question. And that's how this works. And it's really nice. And in the chat, sorry, in the uh, presentation, I put the link to how you add the audio questions. I don't know if I have time to actually show you how to record it, but it's very straightforward. You just choose, for example, multiple choice, and it gives you the option of clicking on the media option. And when you click on that, it allows you to record your voice. So it is very straightforward. And the, the link is in the presentation. So you get the idea. We haven't got time to do all of this, but you get the idea on how this is working. And I can click on questions here and I can then have all the questions that I can play those back if anyone couldn't hear them on their own device. And you can save this, as, you can create this as a live activity or as a homework activity. So you could use this as a remote uh, asynchronous homework listening task, which I think is very exciting. Okay, because we're sort of running out of time, I'm going to click end game and end game. So well done, everybody. Uh, we can see that the fastest finger was Sophie. Well done, Sophie. And uh, you've also got the option to download the results, which is here, download results if you want the Excel spreadsheet. And, and there we are. So that's how that works. I know that was very, very quick, but it just gives you hopefully a flavor of how this, uh, how this works. So if I now go to here and click present, you can see that all the links are there. Uh, here are some uh, uh, teachers using quizzes so you can see you've got the Bitmoji uh, memes that you can add into quizzes so that um, you can have you as the teacher saying, well done, which is nice. This is good for self-assessment. Left-hand side there from uh, Esmeralda Salgado from King's Ely. Karine there talking about using it for the uh, future interior, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is just how you set it up. You've got the link there to how to make your audio questions. Um, I know we were going to do this last time. I'm, uh, can you insert? 
Uh, yeah, so if you want to add accents, you just add accents in the standard way. Uh, da, 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 da. Is there a way of exporting quizzes? Uh, I think the answer to that is yes. If you just do a search for exporting quizzes, you'll be able to see. You can, you can certainly teleport from another collection into your collection, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to, if it's okay, I'm just going to click here. I know we're sort of running over slightly, um, but it, I just want to show you this very quickly because I did promise to do this last time and it's only going to take five minutes. So I'm going to go to whiteboard.fi and click new class and put in my name like this. This is uh, really nice, I think. And then I'm going to copy the, the link into the chat for you like that. Okay. Um, so what I'd like you to do, please, is on your device, I'd like you to go to whiteboard.fi forward slash and put in the code, which in this case is uh, C8NXT, like that. And then put your name there, join whiteboard class. And then I'd like to draw a picture representing how you're feeling about remote teaching. So you can see that on my page, I've done a little heart. And so the idea of this is everybody is drawing. It's a bit like having your own um, mini whiteboard, but you're doing it digitally. And if you do a search for uh, whiteboard to FI on Twitter, you'll see lots of people really loving this, which is great. Now I'm going to pick on someone, if that's okay, I'm going to pick on Alice like that. So Alice is here. Alice, if you can keep on drawing just anything at all, and I'm going to launch Screencastify while you're doing that and click record. And, oh, I'm going to close my video first on Zoom. Uh, otherwise it won't work. So I'll do that again, click record and click on Alice. There we are. And now I'm going to click on the drawing tool. Oh, let's do that again. If I click on Alice, there we are. Click on the drawing. Okay. Let me just do it over the top there. So here I'm going to, as you can see, I'm trying to give Alice uh, individual feedback. So, um, this is fantastic. Normally you click on it and you, um, uh, you're able to, see the individual whiteboard. For some reason, it's chucking me out to do that. So you can see what I'm doing is, um, Alice could carry on drawing while I'm giving feedback. And everything's being captured by my voice, my annotations, uh, and everything on the screen. So that's really lovely. And that's just disappeared for some reason. I don't know. Okay, maybe it's being a bit glitchy right now, but you get the idea, hopefully. Okay, it is being a bit glitchy, Never mind. I'm gonna click um, stop now, which is here, and click stop, right? And what will happen now, it will create a new page which um, has the recording. And so if I click drawing, okay. Oh. Let me just, I can now I'm gonna, this I'm gonna click like on this. the drawing tool. Oh, let's do that again. If I click on Alan, there we are, click on the drawing. Okay, let me just do it over the top there. So here I'm going to, as you can see, I'm trying to give Alice. So if you've not seen this before, this is called screencasting. So using Screencastify, you can record up to five minutes of screencast with your voice, your annotations and, and, your, and, and everything. And then I can click on copy shareable link here, which is, um, uh, which is automatically uploading the video to Google Drive. So I can then paste that into the chat and then you can then click on that and watch it back. So you could use a screencast in order to give uh, video feedback on anyone's work, such as um, in a Google Doc and what have you and then paste the links of Screencastify into a comment within Google Docs or within uh, Google Slides as well. Or the students could use it as a way of um, doing a screencast over an image, which you could find in photos of a class, and then in the target language describing that image, or for the photo card and what have you. And then share the link very easily in the way that I've just shown you um, uh, via a copy shareable link. Um, I don't think, well, with the maximum number of students, I've done, I think it's 500, if I remember correctly. No, so that's quizzes. But anyway, I've done, I've used them, um, whiteboard.fi uh, with literally hundreds of people when I was doing a session for the British Council in Indonesia. And I don't think, I'm not sure if there's a limit, but the more people you have, the more glitchy it will be. And it was a little bit glitchy today, which it isn't normally. So that's a bit disappointing, but hopefully you get the idea on how this, uh, how this works. And I'm finishing it off now. Um, this is just um, Google Meet. I got very excited this week that Google Meet is now completely free. And so you could use, um, something like tab resize or jewelless or um, tab scissors that I mentioned already to split your screen if you're using Google Meet. Um, and before it would just be G Suite users could use it, but anyone can use it now. So you could have your video conferencing window on the right hand side and then uh, whiteboard.fi on the left hand side. So you can then see your students while you are 
um, seeing them interact with the whiteboard. And again, if you do a search for whiteboard.fi, you can see lots of language teachers using it as well as other in other subjects as well. And that's it. So thanks ever so much for watching. I'm going to ask Alistair to come on in a moment just to talk about feedback uh, for the session and as well as another exciting session next week. Um, so it's not an app, it's a website, whiteboard.fi. Anybody can access it. It's perfect for a bring your own device context. So if you would like to access this presentation uh, and share it with um, whoever you would like to share it with, then that is fine. So it's just is.gd forward slash Pearson two. And if you do the same thing for Pearson one, then you'll get last week's presentation. As I've said already, I am recording this session, so I will put it up onto uh, my YouTube channel uh, later on, and you'll be able to then watch that. And uh, yeah, but I'm um, hoping you found that useful. Um, if you want to all turn your webcams on now and uh, your mics, and Alistair can then maybe say one or two words, that would be great. Um, so as I've said already, Aruna, the, the recording will be on my YouTube channel. It's not there yet, as in the last week's, and this week's obviously is not there yet, because I'm still recording, but um, it will be very soon. Uh, while um, I'm, you know, juggling all the other work I'm doing at the moment, but it will be very soon, either today or tomorrow. So you can then watch it back. And um, you've got my contact details. So if there's any other support you would like, just let me know. We can go from there. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing. And if everyone wants to come on the screen, if you would like to use this, it's not obligatory, you don't have to. I'll stop recording now.